Hey, welcome to the shop. I'm constantly getting asked about stick welding thin metal, whether it's sheet metal or thin walled tubing. Now, is stick welding the right tool for the job? Is it even a good idea? How thin can you go? Can I weld together the sharp edge of uh, two box cutter razor blades? Stay tuned, let's find out. Let's get on the same page about what we mean by thin material. So I'm not talking about three millimeter or one eighth inch thick plate. This is just fine for stick welding, goes great, no special treatment or anything. In fact, I'd recommend uh, stick welding for this thickness of plate on up. I'm talking about thinner than that. Now, because I don't want to mislead anybody, let me be clear that in these thinner materials, MIG welding and TIG welding are better options than stick. However, I have had some good success stick welding 1 16th of an inch, which is 16 gauge or one and a half millimeter thick plate, uh, using 6013 electrodes. Let me show you how I do that. And you may have seen the video I put out last year where I did that very thing on some square tubing. I'll link that video in the description below if you're interested. Now here I have a T-joint that I've tacked up and I'm just welding along this fillet weld with that 330 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeters 6013 electrode. Now as I work my way along, I'm just doing my best to maintain a nice steady rod angle and I'm dragging a little bit to use some of that arc force to force the slag back there in the back edge of the puddle. And I am set here on my machine at uh, 39 amps, though I know this machine runs a little bit hot. This is the Deco Pro, it's just a cheap uh, welder I picked up off Amazon. And you can see on that amp meter, it's running closer to right around 55 to 60 amps. But anyway, we can take a look at the fillet weld, chipping some slag off here, and it came out pretty good, I think, for welding on this thin material with the 6013. So that's fairly straightforward. There's no special song or dance to do that. You just need to use good technique, have the right short arc length, the right current setting. You need to have a uh, nice steady travel speed and a good rod angle. You know, those four fundamental things. And if those are new to you, check out my stick welding basics video in the description as well. Now, let's take a look at another problem I've had people describe to me, and I think this is what's going on. So I've turned the machine down here, and I'm running at too low of an amperage for this rod to maintain a, st a steady, stable arc with a nice short arc length. And as I run along, it's really a mess. You can see I'm having a whole lot of trouble here running this weld. And uh, let's take a look at it, how the results came out. Let me warn you, this is a little bit scary, so you might want to close your eyes for the next few seconds while I show you this. But anyway, uh, here it is. And that is not going to be good for much of anything. Now, I was really attempting to use the very same technique on both. I just needed a bit more amperage to maintain that steady arc and to bridge between both plates. So if you're having that problem, that might be your solution. You know, you don't want to turn it down too low out of fear of burning through your plates. So you want to make sure you've just got those fundamentals right and it'll work out for you. Now let's get a little bit experimental here to see how far we can take this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this 1 16th of an inch plate or uh, one and a half millimeter, and I'm going to work my way down in thickness, implementing four different tricks that people have pointed out to me that might help with stick welding thin metal. So here's the baseline running that 330 seconds of an inch or uh, 2.4 millimeter 6013 electrode on this thickness of plate. And it's running along just fine. I have this set at 40 amps and I've moved to my Miller machine so I'll have some more reliable uh, amperage outputs. So when I describe the amperage, it should be a little bit more accurate. Now taking a look at the result, I got a reasonable bead profile for what I'm trying to do and it didn't burn through on the backside really at all. So let's go ahead and move down in thickness to a one millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch thick material. Now I've moved down to a 1 16th of an inch diameter electrode and I'm running at a lower amperage there. And uh, the 40 amps is about the minimum that you can get away with very reliably on a 3 seconds of an inch electrode. That's, that's really the edge of it. And so I'm moving down to where I'm at the higher end of the range on these 1 16th electrodes. Now these are a Forney brand, uh, 1 16th of an inch, 6013 electrodes. And there's a very important reason why I picked these. It is because they were the cheapest option on Amazon for 1 16th inch rods. And I figured they'd be good enough for what we're doing here today. 
but uh, they actually worked just fine. Um, so, so no complaints there. Here's a little chart I put together with some recommendations on material thicknesses and amperages for stick welding. Now there is a little wiggle room outside of these, but it's a good starting point. I've set my machine now at 30 amps. And I'm just running along with the stringer bead in the same way that I did before and it's gone pretty well. Now here the result I got an overall pretty decent uh, weld profile for what I'm attempting to do other than a little bit uh, heaped up here on the end but uh, the back side you can see it penetrated all the way through which of course it's going to on something this thin but uh, it didn't burn through and notice I have all these coupons hanging off the side of the table so I don't get any heat sink effect behind them. Well, having pulled that off let's move down to 0.6 millimeter, which is only 25 thousandths of an inch thick steel plate. Now in order to do this, I have swapped my cables on the machine to change the polarity, hoping that that will help me have a little bit less penetration. I did a video exploring the polarity a little bit, but I haven't done much. Everything I've run so far today has been electrode positive. I'm going to trade and make the electrode negative. If you're wondering what that does, you can check out that video link down below. But uh, anyway, I'm running along here and it's going okay. You can see once again, I got a reasonable bead profile. And if we look at the back side, uh, you can see it melted all the way through. But I just welded, uh, you know, about half a millimeter thick plate, you know, 25 thousandths of an inch thick steel welded with sticks. I'm pretty excited about that, that I made it through that without burning holes. Now let's pull out one more trick before we move on to the razor blade challenge. And I'm going to use that same 25 thousandths of an inch or uh, 0.6 millimeter thick sheet for the next one. Now for this one, um, I'm running once again, 20 amps. That's what I was running on the last one is 20 amps um, on electrode negative. And I am going to clamp this one to an aluminum bar. And I'm going to use that to draw some of the heat out of the material. Now, this is a trick that I use fairly often when I'm TIG welding. And I keep a bunch of uh, scrap aluminum bars laying around to clamp onto things. And it helps quite a bit to reduce material distortion and keep from melting through. Figured, why can't we do that with stick? So I've clamped this on here and I'm running the weld. And you can see I'm getting a much nicer profile here. And, uh, you know, the weld is coming out at least as good as I am. Let's look at this with the slag removed. And we have a pretty good weld bead profile. And on the back side, you can see it did penetrate all the way through. However, uh, it didn't sink through because we had that aluminum bar there on the back to keep it in place and draw the heat out. The other thing to notice here is this particular plate actually maintained its flatness very well, where the other ones turned into a Pringle potato chip here. And so that's another thing that a heat sink can really help with. And that's something if you're welding an outside corner joint or if you're welding a butt joint between two plates, that's something you can use with pretty much any process. I think it's time to take on the razor blade challenge. Now to do this, I've turned my machine clear down to 15 amps, which is lower than I've ever stick welded before. And I have taken the razor blades and I'm going to go ahead and clamp them onto that aluminum bar here. And once they're clamped in place, I am ready to go. And I'm not going to be using any different technique. I'm going to be running a stringer bead all the way across. I'm off to the races here, just welding along, trying to keep that arc uh, in there nice and short and keep it from going out all the way along. And it's going okay. Take a look here at an arc shot and, uh, then let's look at our result and I got some slag peel. This is the smallest slag peel I have ever seen. It's kind of cool actually. Uh, anyway, but uh, cleaned it off of there and, and flip it over. I ran a couple of these to get a couple different shots and this is, uh, this is the result that I got. Razor blade challenge can be done with stick welding. Now, unfortunately, the market for welded razor blades has already been captured by all the TIG welders in the past, so I'm not going to be able to get rich doing this. Nor do I really recommend stick welding material this thin, but when you are faced with that challenge, hopefully these are some tips that you can put in place to help you out to have the best chance of success. So really the thinnest I'd probably recommend going is that one and a half millimeter, one sixteenth of an inch thick plate, but you definitely can go thinner if you put some of these things in place, if you have to. Hey, well, if you'd like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up and we'll see you next time.